This is the 55th lecture in the FOA series of lectures on fiber optics. This lecture is on the mysterious DB of fiber optics. And just as a warning, we're going to get into a little bit of math, math you may not have seen since school, but I think we can explain it so you can understand it. Remember seeing this equation? Every fiber optic book training course and most websites have it somewhere. It's the most confusing subject to many people, including those who take the FOA certification tests. So this lecture is trying to define it so that everybody can understand it. dB is simply a measurement unit, just like meters or kilometers or kilograms or if you think in American units, feet, miles, and pounds. It was created more than a century ago for sound measurements and named after Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone. dB is very widely used as a measurement unit. It originally started as a measurement of sound and you've probably heard discussions about how loud a jet airplane can be, about 140 dB, or a rock concert, about the same. They also use it in electrical measurements to measure the gain of amplifiers, for example, or electrical power. And they use it in RF wireless as a measure of radio frequency power. We use it in two different ways in fiber optics. We use it just as dB, a measurement of loss or gain, usually the loss or attenuation of a fiber optic cable. And we use it as dBm, which is a measurement of, of optical power compared to one milliwatt, for example, for transmitter outputs or receiver inputs. Today in fiber optics, nobody measures in watts. They all measure in dB, either dBm calibrated to national standards, or dB to measure loss or gain. We had to go find a 25-year-old meter in order to show you what a measurement looks like of the same power in dB and in watts. And you can see we're measuring 16 microwatts. That's 0.016 milliwatts which comes out to minus 17.96 dBm. Here you can see the actual meter making the measurement. 16 microwatts becomes minus 18 dBm. So optical power is measured in dBm or dB reference to 1 milliwatt. If the measured power equals 1 milliwatt, the power is 0 dBm. If the measured power is more than 1 milliwatt, higher power, that becomes plus whatever x dBm. If the measured power is less than 1 milliwatt, the power is minus negative number x dBm. Here's actually a table of measuring power in dBm over the range we often see in fiber optics. Uh, an LED light source might have between minus 20 and minus 30 dBm of power. A laser around zero, a high-powered DFB laser around plus 10, and the output of a fiber amplifier is greater than plus 20 dBm. And there's the conversion into microwatts. The confusing part is how do we make that conversion from watts to dB? And what does that equation that we see all the time really mean? Well, dB is the measurement unit. It equals 10 times the logarithm of the ratio of the measured power to the reference power. Now, that may sound like gibberish at this point, but we're actually going to try to explain it so you can understand it. The way we're going to understand it is to 
break it down into each of the parts of the equation. dB is the measurement unit. It's a called a decibel, and that means one-tenth of a bell. The bell was the sound unit, measurement unit, named for Alexander Graham Bell. And it was defined by this equation. dB equals 10 times the log of measured power over reference power. Okay, here's the tough one. This is a logarithm. Logarithm to the base 10. A logarithm is the exponent or power to which a base number must be raised to yield a given number. And the way it's defined is the log of 10 to the nth power equals n. So the exponent there is the logarithm. For example, 10 times 10, or 10 squared, is 100. Therefore, the log of 100 is 2. Power ratio is a little easier to understand. It's measured in simple terms like watts of power, and that's a watt just like a light bulb is a 60 watt light bulb. If the measured power and the reference power are equal, then the ratio is 1. If the two are equal, there is no loss or no gain. Now the log of 1 is 0 because 10 to the 0th power is 1. And that's some fairly complex abstract mathematics that I ask you to take on faith. So in the equation, 10 times the log 1 is 0, so 0 dB means no gain or no loss. The power is equal. Here's another example. Suppose the measured power is twice the reference power, so the ratio of power is 2. 10 times the log of 2 over 1, or 10 times the log of 2, is plus 3. Plus 3 dB means a factor of 2 times in the power ratio, or a gain of 2. You have twice as much power, you have a gain of 2, you have 3 dB. What if the measured power is half of the reference power? The ratio becomes 1 half, or 0 0.5. 10 times the log of a half, or 10 times the log of 0.5, is minus 3. Minus 3 dB means a loss of half of the power or a loss of half. So 3 dB is a loss. The way logarithms work is that if the ratio is larger than 1, the logarithm is positive. If the ratio is smaller than 1, the logarithm is negative. And that's where the gain and loss become positive and negative. It's easier to see if you graph it. If you have a power ratio of 1 on the lower scale, that's 0 dB. If you have twice as much power, power ratio of 2, that is plus 3 dB gain. If you have half as much power, that's minus 3 dB, and that's loss. So it's really pretty simple. we can look at the optical power ratio and see the range that we actually see in fiber optics. The longest systems may have 40 dB of loss, which means the signal is down to one part in 10,000 compared to where it started. Most systems are 10 dB or less, which means the power is only decreased by a factor of 10. And if the power goes into a fiber amplifier, it may be boosted by 20 dB, or a factor of 100. 
So these are numbers that relate to what actually happens in fiber optics. Here's our old meter again that measures in microwatts and dBm and has a zero dB reference scale. So across the top, we're looking at 16 microwatts or minus 17.96 dBm and we set the zero dB at that point. On the bottom, we've reduced the power to 18.69 dB or 13.5 microwatts and that shows the power is lower by minus 0 0.70 dB. So we've seen a loss from the top to the bottom of 7 tenths of a dB. Let's use this meter to actually measure loss. Here we've set the meter at 0 dB our reference was set with no stress in the cable, and then we put stress in the cable. So when we put stress in the cable, we induce loss. We start at 0 dB, and then as we put more stress in, the meter reads more and more negative dB, which shows that loss is negative dB. If loss is negative and gain is positive, why would a, an OTDR show a trace like this? You can see there is a gainer and attenuation measured on the trace. The attenuation is 0 0.201 dB per kilometer, but it's a positive number. And the gainer, which we know is a gain, shows a negative number, which is what we think should be for loss. So what's going on here? Some years ago, an international standards group changed the definition of loss, reversing the power ratio so loss was a positive number. Instead of dB equal 10 log measured power over reference power, they changed it to A, attenuation, and dB equals 10 log P1 over P2, where P1 is basically the reference power and P2 is the measurement power. So when you define it that way, loss has now become a positive number. So if you have an OTDR or an optical loss test set that doesn't measure power but just measures loss, you can use this equation and define it as loss as a positive number. But if loss is a positive number, that makes gain a negative number, which is confusing. Why not just say loss or gain? Put that in the display. Or make losses red and gains blue. That must have been a better solution than changing the whole equation. Somehow or another, the people that changed that equation didn't know that all the world including all the measurement experts, people call metrologists, do it the traditional way, just like the equation at the top. We looked at websites from highly technical theses down to Wikipedia, and everybody defines dB the traditional way, measured power over reference power, not the inverted way that these people wrote into their standards. The problem with the way they interpret the equation means that if you measure with a meter and source, you always get the wrong answer according to them. The way you traditionally make a measurement of loss is you make your first measurement, what they call P1, at the end of the reference cable and call that 0 dB. Then if you put your meter on the end with a reference cable and measure the power at the end, you get a negative number. If you want to measure with a meter and source and show loss as a positive reading, you have to reverse your measurement sequence. You have to start by making 
the complete system, launch cable, cable to test and receive cable, and measuring that and setting 0 dB, then going back and measuring the output of the launch cable. That way your output of the launch cable is a bigger number and you get a plus reading. But how many people measure that way? The typical way to measure is you set the output of the launch cable and you go test cables and you can keep, keep testing cable after cable, fiber after fiber, and making loss measurements to that reference. Theoretically, if you did it this way, you would have to make a reference measurement after every test. Here's our demonstration again with the old meter and putting stress on the cable. And you can see the loss goes to a negative value. If you wanted to try to duplicate this same test with an optical loss test set or shoot it with an OTDR, you're going to get a positive number. And that's why. It's the change in that definition which relates to an optical loss test set or an OTDR but doesn't make sense when you're working with a power meter and source. Fortunately, they left dBm the same. It's still reference to one milliwatt, the power ratio with a milliwatt. But that means that if you have something at a milliwatt and have a gain to 10 milliwatts, it's a positive number. And if you have a loss of to one milliwatt, it's a negative number. So it's just the opposite of the way they define the loss of the cable plant, which is part of the reason that this is so confusing to so many people. So that's why an optical loss test set, or OTDR, defines loss as a positive number and gain as a negative number. And if you do the same measurement with meter and source, you'll find that loss is negative, gain is positive. It's all in the definition. We hope our short presentation here clarified how we got to this point, why it's confusing, and will help you understand the difference if you work with a meter and source or a, an optical loss test set or an OTDR. We just say loss or gain all the time and generally don't pay any attention to the sign because of this confusion. So we suggest you do the same. We're the Fiber Optic Association, the International Professional Society of Fiber Optics, and the internationally recognized certifying body for fiber optic techs. You can go to our website and find the FOA guide with close to a thousand pages of technical information or FiberU where we offer free online courses and most of the topics in fiber optics.